All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this uh, perforated screen. So we've been working on a project. It's got a little a little screen in it. And so when we were doing that vacuum probe, I just gave you guys this screen. But now to do the vacuum breaker valve project that you started on last week, you're going to need to know how to make this screen. So I'm going to show you how to do this base flange again. So the base flange to give us a sheet metal part. That gives us kind of the uh, overall shape of it and then show you how to unfold it so that we can then do a fill pattern to create the holes, or at least create the representation of the holes in there, and then fold it all back up, and then go ahead and use it in your assembly. I'll also show you how to make configurations to be able to control the performance of your computer a little bit better. So this is how we're gonna go about doing that. Go ahead and open up a new part on this part. I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to put a sketch on my front plane and I'm going to draw a center point arc. So with your center point arc, the first clicks at the center and then your second and third clicks are somewhere on the circumference of the arc. So I'm going to do something about like that. The radius of this is going to be 1.0785. And then I'm going to make these two points horizontal. So I'm just going to hold down control while I select those two points, make them horizontal. And then I'm going to put an arc length on this. So again, to do arc length, I'm going to start my dimension command, click on the circumference of my arc, and then click on my two endpoints. And I'm going to place that. And this is going to be 4.53125. Four point five three one two five. And I hit the green check mark. Okay, so that gives me a fully defined sketch. So now I'm ready to go ahead and extrude this. So if you don't have this sheet metal tab like I do, you just need to right click on any of these tabs. And if there's not a check mark next to sheet metal, go ahead and click on it. And that will add your sheet metal tab in there. So once you get your sheet metal tab, click on base flange. And for this one, uh, like a lot of my extrusions, I use mid plane. So I'm going to go ahead and use mid-plane, and this is going to be a depth of three and a half inches. Okay, so after that, I will select my use gauge table, and then click in select table, go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to use this sample table steel for what we're doing here. That takes it just a few seconds to load. So once it loads, we'll go ahead and select our gauge. All right, now that this thing's loaded, um, I realized it shouldn't have been steel, it should have been aluminum. So I'll go ahead and select the aluminum table out of there and then give it a few seconds to load again. All right, so now that it's loaded, I'm looking under sheet metal parameters under the gauge and I want 26 gauge. So I'll go ahead and use that. Uh, the Bend radius there, I'll just use the smallest one in the list. So that one's already selected. K factor is good. Uh, there's no relief, so it doesn't matter what I put down here. I'll go ahead and just change it to tear since that's normally what we do. So I'll change it to tear. Now that's all good, I can hit my green check mark. So I've got my, my rough shape. Now I need to flatten this out so I can put the holes in it. So I will do unfold. So I'll click on unfold. I'm going to zoom in here and click on an edge. I want that edge to stay where it's at. I'm going to click on collect all bins and hit the green check mark. That way that edge stayed where it was. Everything else unfolded around it. And now I'll come on over here to features and I'll find fill pattern. And fill patterns right here under linear pattern. So I'll click on the little arrow, click on fill pattern. And so my fill boundary is going to be this face. So I'll click on that face. My pattern layout, I just want a rectangular layout. My spacing, I'm going to use 0.15 for that. I'm going to come on down here under features and faces, and I'm going to use the option to create a seed cut. 
and I want that to be a square cut for this uh, perforated screen that I'm working on. And so the size of that is going to be 0.1. Come back up here, and my distance from the edge, I'm going to make that 0 0.05. And then the distance between my rows, I'm going to make that 0.15. And then I can zoom in here, I can kind of take a look at what that looks like. Everything else there looks good. I'll go ahead and hit my green check mark, and I'll go ahead and let that process through and make those cuts for me. All right, so those cuts can, have all been made. And again, this is just a representation. It's not exactly perfect. It doesn't exactly match, match that screen, uh, but it's going to get me pretty close. It's going to give me the look that those are holes in there. And also this is a better way to do it than to actually cut one and then do a linear pattern of it. Using fill pattern takes a lot less uh, resources than it does to do the actual pattern itself. So just to show you here where those numbers came from, if I measure this, so it was 0 0.05 off the edge. So there's 0 0.05 off the edge. And then the others were in between. So I've got 0.15 going in between the, the rows and then 0.15 between the columns. So that's where those numbers are all coming from and that's how it all works together. All right, so then the last couple things I have here is to go ahead and, and fold this thing back up. So I'll come on back over to the sheet metal tab. I'll click on fold and I'll just do collect all bins and then hit the green check mark. That'll roll this thing back up for me. So now I've got it rolled up. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we'll just go ahead and put this on our U drives. Go ahead and save it in the same folder we've been working in. I'll just save it right here at this location. And this happens to be the part that I've already given you, but it's A217-3. And I'll put behind it, I'll put new to indicate that it's different than the other one that I gave you. So we'll go ahead and do that, hit save. Now this thing's all rolled up, it's done. The one thing is if you insert this into your assembly, you're going to see some performance issues. So we want to create a configuration of this. So I'll come over here to my configuration manager. I'll right click on this top level, do add configuration. And I'll just call this one without holes. So I'll just give that the name, hit the green check mark. And now it's my active configuration. I'm just going to go back over here. And I'm going to suppress this fill pattern. So I'll right click on fill pattern, click on suppress. Now the holes are gone. So that's the one I would insert into my assembly. And then just before I was ready to print, I would change out that configuration to use the one with holes and you can just toggle back and forth by double clicking on them. All right, so that's everything I want to show you today is just how to create a sheet metal part out of this by using the base flange command, using fill pattern to get those holes in there, and then how to use configurations to help with the performance of your computer. So hopefully this all made sense and you guys are able to put this into use today and keep working on these vacuum breaker valves. So thanks for listening and we'll see you soon.